Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be talking about the effects of lion's mane mushroom on the body. So let's dive right in. Hey guys, welcome to Nutrition Library where we take an evidence-based approach to supplementation and wellness. If you haven't already, do me a huge favor and hit the red subscribe button that's below this video so that you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thank you so much. All right, so I would say that lion's mane mushroom is probably one of the, if not the most requested video that I have gotten since I've started my YouTube channel. And I think the reason for this is because there are so many kind of health entrepreneur influencers that are on the internet now on YouTube and Google and have their own blog and because so many people are talking about it and because there is so little evidence that is currently out there, it leaves a ton of people wondering whether or not it actually works. And the reason for this is because the supplement and quote unquote influencer industry is just so jacked up right now because what you have is a bunch of supplement companies paying these influencers to kind of hype up these products that don't have a lot of research behind them. And what you'll notice is that a ton of the recent um, health and supplementation trends that have been going on the past couple of years have mostly been compounds and supplements and even diets that just completely lack sound research behind their effectiveness. Now, the reason this is happening is because supplement companies can come up with these uh, new and novel supplement ideas and then pump a bunch of money into the market um, of influencers out there that are hyping specific products. And so people like me that are trying to cut through the crap of all of that end up not really having a leg to stand on because there just is so few research to refute these um, overinflated claims about these supplements. And another issue is that I think people far underestimate the power of placebo, which is another thing that supplement companies and cheap influencers like to prey upon because the, the literature at this moment is replete with study after study that just shows the immense power of placebo and just the power of simply taking a sugar pill and the power that it can have on the human psyche. And so this is why it is more important than ever to base your health decisions and uh, decisions on which supplements you're going to take on actual research and not just a subjective experience from some um, influencer that you might even trust and respect. And so now the reason I start this video with that is because though I'm not super anti lion's mane, I do believe there is a ton of hype in the industry right now surrounding lion's mane as a supplemental compound. And so when we do start getting into some of the research, I just wanted to kind of lay the groundwork for why so many of you have been um, asking about it and why so many of you still have a lot of unanswered questions about it. So now in this video, we are gonna cover the two primary touted uh, health benefits of lion's mane mushroom, which are improvements in cognition and more specifically improvements in um, memory and focus. And then the second health benefit that gets thrown around a lot is its ability to improve mood um, and symptoms of anxiety and depression more specifically. So again, those are the two kind of um, health 
health claims that we're going to specifically talk about in this video. Now, there are other health claims that float around, but those are the two primary ones that I hear most often. So what we're going to do is dive into the research surrounding those two health claims so that you guys can get a better picture of what lion's mane can actually be used for. Now, one of the major issues when it comes to the research surrounding lion's mane is that there's literally only four research papers that have been published in living models surrounding lion's mane's effect on both cognition and mood. Now, there are even more issues with those four studies because two of those are only performed in rats and the two studies that we do have in rats didn't even take any clinical measurements, meaning that uh, though they measured things like beta amyloid plaque uh, formation and um, some specific markers in regards to nerve growth factor in the bloodstream, they didn't specifically measure um, improvements in mood and symptoms of depression um, and even cognitive symptoms in these rats. And so there's no direct correlation with the blood markers that are measured mentioned in these studies and a direct impact on clinical markers. And then the two studies that we do have in humans were uh, both performed in unhealthy participants. One uh, was performed in patients with Alzheimer's and the other research study that was performed was uh, performed in postmenopausal women. And so one of the major issues when it comes to making a informed health decision on whether or not to take lion's mane is that there are just so few research papers to draw upon. However, let's go ahead and dive into them so that we can kind of at least draw the conclusions that we can. All right, so the first health claim that we're gonna talk about today is its effects on cognition and again, more specifically, its effects on focus and memory. Now, there is only one research paper in particular that was designed to test the effects of lion's mane mushroom on cognition. And like I've previously stated, it was performed in patients with Alzheimer's. And so there's really no ability to make a direct correlation between um, the effects that lion's mane had in these participants with Alzheimer's and healthy participants. However, with that being said, there was some promising results with uh, the addition of lion's mane into the diet of individuals with Alzheimer's and uh, what they saw was just a general improvement in cognition scores in almost all of the participants that took the lion's mane. Now, again, the important thing to note here is that we really don't know if this is an effect of lion's mane per se, meaning that um, it's not super clear whether or not this is just simply a reversal of that cognitive decline that happens in Alzheimer's or if it's an actual outright effect and improvement in cognition that would also um, appear in healthy individuals. Now, my personal opinion is that you shouldn't expect too much of a cognitive improvement in healthy individuals simply because of the mechanisms that are hypothesized to be at play here. Now, the first mechanism that is hypothesized to be in play here um, is an improvement in nerve growth factor. Um, and this has been tested in a couple of different rat studies as well as some in vitro studies uh, that has shown a fairly reliable ability of lion's mane to improve the release of nerve growth factor and to actually uh, increase the genetic expression of the protein that's required to produce nerve growth factor. Now, obviously nerve growth factor is a protein that helps nerves to grow, but the interesting thing here is that even nerve growth factor isn't the primary stimulator of nerve growth in the central nervous system and the brain. And so if you guys have seen some of my other videos, you know that I'm a fairly big fan of methods to increase uh, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is a protein uh, that is 
present in the brain that signals uh, nerves and brain cells to uh, kind of branch out and connect in new ways, which encourages neuroplasticity. Now, the effectiveness of methods to do that are kind of debated within the literature at the moment. Um, however, my point here is that I wouldn't put a ton of weight on lion's mane's ability to increase nerve growth factor and to subsequently improve cognition in healthy individuals simply because we know that Alzheimer's does uh, have an effect on reducing nerve growth factor, meaning that the improvement that is seen with Alzheimer's patients in taking lion's mane may be because of the improved function of nerve growth factor that just simply doesn't happen in healthy individuals. Now, the second hypothesized mechanism here is that lion's mane has the capacity to reduce beta amyloid plaque formation in the brain, which is a significant indicator of the progression of Alzheimer's disease and so theoretically and this has been shown in rat models not in human models yet but theoretically if you're able to slow the formation of those or even reverse the formation of beta amyloid plaques um, there theoretically should be a subsequent reversal of the symptoms of Alzheimer's. Again, this is also debated within the literature at the moment. So again, I wouldn't put a ton of weight on this as well. However, these are uh, the hypothesized mechanisms at the moment and do seem to be at play to some degree in patients that are experiencing cognitive decline. All right, so the second health claim of lion's mane mushroom that we're going to discuss today is its effects on mood. And more specifically, its effects on the symptoms of anxiety and depression. Now, there is literally, again, only one study that has been performed in humans at the moment that has even looked into the effects of lion's mane on improving uh, the symptoms of anxiety and depression and improving overall mood. And that one study was performed in menopausal patients. Now, that one study did show some fairly promising results with the participants that went through that study and received lion's mane treatment. Um, there was a fairly significant improvement in the symptoms of anxiety and depression. However, the reason I'm making a big deal about this is because there just isn't any indication that the improvement that was seen in these patients in that specific research paper would actually carry over into any any other population. Now, it is possible that the results could carry over, but again, because there is just zero research and because of how powerful the placebo effect is, I would hold off on taking lion's mane for improving mood simply because there is such little evidence and there are more um, well-researched options that are on the market that can give you a better bang for your buck. Now, another major issue that I have with the research surrounding lion's mane's effect on mood is that when it comes to just the research uh, surrounding it, there is literally no proposed mechanism of action when it comes to improving mood, meaning that we have zero idea of any, and I mean any effect that lion's mane has on any of the neurotransmitter systems or hormonal networks within the body. Now, one of the reasons this is such a big deal to me is because um, there are several compounds that are fairly popular that actually um, have some fairly potent anti-fertility effects and anti-androgenic effects um, and anti-dopaminergic effects, which I am highly against personally just because of how they personally affect my body. And so because there is no research on lion's mane's effects on those um, health parameters, 
I typically choose to stay away from taking it. Now, with that being said, I do think there are some very specific subpopulations that would benefit from taking lion's mane. And those are one, um, anyone who has a significant predisposition to cognitive decline or is currently experiencing cognitive decline of any sort, lion's mane might be a good option for you simply because that is one of the populations that we know experience some level of benefit from taking lion's mane. And then the second group of people that would probably benefit from taking lion's mane is anyone who has had extensive genetic testing done that has determined that you are um, positive for some of the genetic predispositions towards reduced nerve growth factor uh, production. You might also uh, benefit from taking lion's mane as well. But other than that, again, if you're looking for something to improve cognition and improve mood, generally speaking, there are other more well-researched and cheaper products on the market. And that is another reason why I'm just not a huge fan of Lion's Mane, simply because it is super pricey to get a decent extract. And I wouldn't be against taking something like it if there was some really good, decent research on its effectiveness in the general population. However, because there is no good research and no indication that lion's mane would improve cognition and memory and mood in the general population, I typically don't recommend taking it. But other than that, guys, I, I hope that answered some of your questions. Um, if you have any other questions in regards to lion's mane um, or any of the other medicinal mushrooms, I'm planning on essentially doing a series on medicinal mushrooms on things like cordyceps and chaga um, and reishi mushroom as well. And so if you guys have any questions or preferences on which videos you guys want to see next, please leave a comment down below and let me know. But other than that, I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much.